Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I got this email from Esther Bay. Question about the 24 Temple lot. Hi Jared, this is subscriber Dr. Linda Schwartz, my handle on your YouTube channel. My name is actually Esther. My husband and I are so excited about the purchase of the Kirtland Temple and the documents and possible new scripture coming forth. I have a question about the LDS Visitor Center in Independence, Missouri. It shows that we, LDS Church, own the lot that the Visitor Center is on. Why have we not built a temple there? Uh, were there restrictions on building when we purchased the lot? My husband and I were looking uh, at the front of the Independence Visitor Center and comparing it to the BYU Jerusalem Center, and they both have 11 arches. We agree with you that those centers will be converted into temples. I'm just wondering what the restrictions are right now on the land that our church owns in Independence, Missouri. Also, did you see Elder Uchtdorf's Facebook post yesterday where he shows pictures of himself and other area authorities meeting in the Kirtland Temple? This is so exciting. I'm a huge fan of your channel and have learned so much and really appreciate all you do. Esther Bay. Well, thank you for the email, Esther. I'm glad that you guys enjoy the channel. So, yeah, let's take this a thing at a time. As far as I know, there aren't any restrictions uh, placed on the church uh, in regards to us building a temple in Independence, Missouri. Now, I'm assuming based on what you said in the email, you're already aware of this, but let me just do it in case anyone's not aware. Um, okay, so the Independence Visitor Center. Right now, it's a visitor center, but it's it was made to be one of the 24 temples of the 24 Temple Complex. Okay? Remember, oh, I should have pulled it up in, in um, the Joseph Smith Papers. I'll do it right now. Joseph Smith Papers Revised City Platt. Okay, here we go. Had New Jerusalem been constructed, if the saints hadn't been driven out, this was the plan for New Jerusalem. A city of 15 to 20,000 people, once full, additional cities would be constructed. Um, but only 15 to 20,000 people. In the center of the city, you have 24 temples. The one in the east for the Aaronic priesthood. The ones in the west for the Melchizedek priesthood. Which is different from the type of temples that we have right now. <coughs> Excuse me. If you go to page two, I think it starts on page two of this. I can't remember. On page two, it has the names of the temples and what they're for. Oh, actually, it was on the um, the original plat before they revised it. That's where you find the names. But I have that here on my spreadsheet. So, for example, temples one through three are House of the Lord for the elders of Zion and Ensign to the nations. Uh, seven through nine, the sacred apostolic repository for the use of the bishop. And then these three, 10 through 12, our house of the Lord for the presidency of the high and, hol and most holy priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, which was after the order of the Son of God upon Mount Zion, city of the New Jerusalem. So you see how it just rolls off the tongue. So you have these ones over here, and the primary temple would be temple number 11. Then you have these ones over here for the Aaronic priesthood, right? And so uh, we don't own all this land. Um, I showed you in a recent video... I did this in Photoshop where, um, you know, here is Independence, Missouri, or at least where, you know, we, we have the different properties, our properties, Community of Christ, the Church of Christ Temple lot. And uh, this Independence Visitor Center is built where temple number, I believe anyway, where temple number 13 would be. So one of the ironic priesthood temples uh, for the deacons. And the, the temple lot that we're always referring to, <coughs> excuse me, would be the lot for one of the temples of the 24. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go to this Interpreter Foundation article. Um, the property purchased by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1904 remained undeveloped until 1968, right? So we're talking about like this property right here, this big area. Uh, we own all this. Here's the stake center. Over here is um, the visitor center. But... I guess before that, it was just an empty lot. <laughs> so, after two different attempts over the years by the City of Independence slash board, board of Education to purchase the property from the church and concerned about the reality of eminent domain, if you don't know what that is, that's where, where the government can just forcibly take your land if they feel like it's in the, the greater interest, uh, by the City of Independence, the church made an announcement in December 1967 
for the present visitor the present visitor center. Plans were quickly developed and formally approved in April 1968. A groundbreaking ceremony was held the following August. Interestingly, in the okay, now this is the key part right here. And I don't know how many people in the church realize this. I think there's people that are like, oh yeah, we're so far away. We we have to construct the new Jerusalem. We don't even have a temple there. We do have a temple there. We have everything that's necessary, like the important things. We have people. A stake is a city and a city is a stake, according to the original plan. And we have one of the temples. Like it's already started. Okay, interestingly... In the development of those plans in early 1967 by church architect Emil Fetzer and with input directly from Alvin R. Dyer, who was a member of the First Presidency, in approval by President David O. McKay, the awareness of the Joseph Smith-inspired expanded 24 Temple Complex prepared in early 1833 was definitely taken into consideration. On March 10, 1967, a meeting of Dyer and Fetzer was held with McKay in his Hotel Utah apartment office. Dyer recorded the highlights of this session in his diary. <coughs> Excuse me. Quote, We reported to the president that our study in this direction was to undertake, if we could, to ascertain which of the temple buildings designated would presumably be located on that part of the temple land that the church owned. This we had arrived at and would be concentrated upon for the erection of a building for the purpose intended. The basic structure of which could be used at a future date as part of the temple complex. Dyer continued, The proposed structure would be two stories high with a floor dimension of 61 feet by 87 feet, which dimension is the same as revealed to the Prophet Joseph as the size of the complex buildings. And you can verify that right here on the Joseph Smith papers. So you have the original plan for these temples and you can see right here, this part that I have highlighted, this house of the Lord for the presidency is 87 feet long and 61 feet wide. That's what we just read in his diary, 61 feet by 87 feet. Um, now there was a revised plan, uh, kind of like how there was a revised plan for the city of New Jerusalem, where instead of 87 feet, it changed to 97. So I don't know why they didn't go with the revised plan, but you know, whatever it's inspired. Okay. So we know that the independence visitor center is not just a visitor center. It's not just uh, for historical interest or anything like that. It's a temple in waiting. It is a temple in waiting. Now, about the arches, <clears throat> it's been a long time since I've really talked about this. At the beginning of my channel, I, I made a bunch of different videos uh, comparing the Independence Visitor Center with the BYU Jerusalem Center. And uh, we've looked at a, like a bunch of different things. So um, so you'll notice that there's this uh, similarity in, in appearance, right? You can kind of see it here in the thumbnails. If you want to get more details, I'll put the link for these videos in the description box below. It's fascinating, I assure you. Watch those videos. But uh, I'll just do a basic version here. So here's the BYU Jerusalem Center. And as noted, there are 11 arches, or in other words, there are 12 pillars, probably for the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, 11 arches, 12 pillars. If we look at the uh, Independence Visitor Center, same thing. 11 arches, 12 pillars on the long side. There's a, a pretty interesting resemblance between these two buildings. And guess what? These are the world headquarters during the millennium. So could it be that somebody with inspiration, not letting it known to the rest of the church or the world yet, as they were planning the BYU Jerusalem Center, they're like, okay, We've been, I've been commanded to, <coughs> I've received instruction from the Lord to get a building built in Jerusalem. And they did. And it's in a pretty prime location. It's on Mount Scopus, which is part of the same ridge as the Mount of Olives. It's essentially part of the same mountain. And uh, we got this center that we built there. It's currently being used as a campus of BYU. And that's great. I'm not so sure that that's what it's going to continue to be in the millennium. And for, for all of you people that have gone to BYU Jerusalem, <clears throat> no professor has the authority to say that it's not in the right place. 
and it's not uh, built to be a temple. They don't know. They're going based off, off of their understanding, um, but they don't know the mind and the will of the Lord. It very well could be a temple. And before you say we can't use it as a temple, that's not true. We just can't use it as a center for proselyting. I've looked it up. I have looked it up. There's nothing that says that we can't use this for whatever we want. What they're concerned about, uh, specifically the Orthodox Jews, and even more specifically the Haredim and the Hasidim, they're, concer- they're concerned about proselytizing. Nothing else. So at any given time, when the Lord gives the direction, he could turn this into a temple. Um, that leads me to, well, yeah, that let, let leads me to my net. Okay, okay, sorry, there's so much to share. Before we get to that, because that's the next portion of my, my video, I also want to point out another capital city temple, Brasilia, Brazil temple, that uh, has a pretty curious resemblance to the BYU Jerusalem Center. You see how it has like this blocky top right here? Same thing right here. Uh, this one has seven arches instead of 11. <coughs> but here we have another capital city, and it looks strangely similar to the BYU Jerusalem Center, and those look similar to uh, the Independence Visitor Center. Very, very interesting. Oh, and by the way, as far as the land goes, um, I did this one time a long time ago where I don't think that it would happen this way, but I just did this little experiment. So the church owns this land right here. Here's the visitor center. Here's the stake center. If there was some kind of revelation, if the Lord decided to change things, which I don't think he will do, but if he did, uh, what I did is using Photoshop, I took the Independence, Independence Visitor Center and I fit 23 other visitor centers on that lot. So if something changed, if it was the mind and the will of the Lord to do this, you could build 24 temples right now on this land. Is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't think so. I tend to think that, um, <clears throat> you know, in the process of time, we'll probably purchase up these other lands. The community of Christ is probably going to dwindle in the millennium or before the millennium. Who knows? Same thing with the Church of Christ Temple Lot, which is even an even smaller church of only like 1,700 people, the last that I checked. So it may just happen that way. Or it could, you know, there could be other ways, obviously, that it could happen if there's like destruction, but I don't typically take that route. Um, I think it's going to just happen in nice, natural ways, just like how we came back into possession of the Kirtland Temple. That, that's what I think. That's what I think. Could be wrong. But uh, if we were to go with the original plan, like I said, it would be this. The, the, the community of Christ currently owns land that would be needed for the 24 temple complex. Their spiral temple right now is in the way of that. And so is the auditorium. And then the, the tiny Church of Christ temple lot owns the lot for temple number 11. And then you have these neighborhoods and stuff over here that are also in the way. Oh, and there's also the, the stone chapel of the community of Christ right there. So something would have to change in order to, to do this, right? Unless it's revealed that this should happen. Don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so with all that in mind, um, I decided to put together a uh, new spreadsheet that shows you, <coughs> sorry about the coughing. I have my follow-up appointment. I'll, I'll, I'll get it figured out at some point. Okay, so I did this new timeline. Uh, this is, The tab is called Temples Repurposed. Just to show you that there is already precedent for taking buildings that were not designed to be temples and turning them into temples. Okay, it's happened before, and it's probably going to happen again. So first, 1997, we have the Vernal Utah Temple, which before that was the Uinta Stake uh, Tabernacle. Okay, so here's the Vernal Temple. It was not a temple in the beginning. It was a tabernacle, and they changed it into a temple, right? So we have that that happened, okay? After that, we have the, the Copenhagen Denmark Temple, which before was the Preerveg, <coughs> excuse me, Preerveg Chapel. Um, so there's this article here, Copenhagen Denmark Temple. This is what it looks like right now. 
Um, this is what it looked like before. And it looks like, as far as like the outside goes, the big difference is you have this steeple that was added. And then obviously they would have done a lot of uh, renovation on the inside to, to make it a temple. But before it was just a chapel. That's all it was. It was just a chapel. Okay. Uh, we also have the Manhattan, New York temple, which uh, before it was a temple, it was a multi-purpose stake center. So we have this here. Um, I was una unable to find like a, what it looked like before. So I don't know if you have any pictures, feel free to submit them. Cause I'd be interested to see that and I'll share it on the channel. But uh, so it looked some kind of way before. And obviously there's been renovation to where it looks like a temple on the outside. But here's another case where you had like a, just like a building, like a, a building in New York, <coughs> not designed to be a temple turned into a temple. It seems like it's not that hard to do. Okay. We have the Ogden, Utah temple, which uh, it was built as a temple originally, right? But it's cha it's changed pretty dramatically over time. The original or Ogden temple um, looked like this. Okay. In fact, even this has been renovated. This used to be like a, like a bronze kind of color, a reddish metallic color. Uh, but they changed it. <coughs> and then they uh, took the really dramatic step to completely, completely renovate it to look like this. Uh, you know, definitely bringing it, bringing it more into our own time. Uh, unfortunately, not that, I mean, this has its own aesthetic, you know, it's, it's okay. I'm sure it was all, you know, it was just amazing back in the 60s and 70s. <laughs> Um, it looks like a sixties or seventies, like wedding cake or something like that. <clears throat> I kind of like it, but it, it has a dated look and no one's to be blamed for that. That's just, you know, something, something was wrong with the world in the sixties and seventies. Um, but now it looks like it's, it looks like this, they've completed it. Okay. So you can do you know, so you can take buildings that were not originally temples and turn them into temples. You can take existing temples and uh, completely do, do a makeover on them, right? <clears throat> but there's more. Okay, we have the uh, Provo City Center Temple, which before was the Provo Tabernacle. Okay, uh, so what it looked like before, it didn't have that, I guess it didn't have that big spire in the middle. <clears throat> it was, it uh, caught fire. And so they decided to rebuild it and rebuild it as a temple. And this is what it looks like. It looks like now it's an amazing temple. And uh, there was a miracle that happened with this where there was a second coming temp. There was a second coming painting um, and it was burned everything except for the part that had Christ on it. I've shown that before on the channel. Okay. Then after that, uh, we have the Alaska or sorry, the Anchorage, Alaska temple, which before it was one of these smaller temples, uh, just under 12,000 square feet. So what they're doing is they're, te they're completely tearing it down and they're building another temple. Um, not even on the same spot. It's like over to the side kind of, <clears throat> and now it's going to be 30,000 square feet. And, uh, the difference is pretty dramatic between what it looked like before. It was like part of that series of small temples during uh, President Hinckley's time. So they're tearing this down and then it's going to look like this. Completely different and not even on the same spot. And then finally, uh, we have the Provo, what was the Provo, Utah temple, which was um, essentially a sister temple to the, the Ogden temple. Has the same like uh, look and aesthetic and stuff. And... Um, they are, I don't know if they're like, because my understanding is that the Ogden Temple, they kind of salvaged some of the original structure and then built around it. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the same thing with the Provo, what's it called? Provo, Utah, Rock Canyon Temple. But you can see another really dramatic makeover of the temple. Okay, so after all of that, as we look at the BYU Jerusalem Center, would it really be that hard? to turn it into a temple. And remember, we don't know what kind of temple it has to be. 
a lot of times we think, oh yeah, there has to be a baptistry and celestial room and ordinance rooms and sealing rooms and, and all this stuff. No, Th- that's not what these temples over here. Okay. Look at the original plan. This is the plan for one of the temples of new Jerusalem. Do you see a, do you see a celestial room or a baptistry or anything like that? No, it basically looks just like the Kirtland temple as a matter of fact. And, um, all these temples, like I said, they're like associated with different priesthood offices. This one's for the deacons. This one's for the teachers, so on and so forth. So if this is what one world capital is going to look like, temples unlike the ones that we have right now in function, then why wouldn't it be the same uh, in old Jerusalem? Why wouldn't it be the same? Where'd it go? Right here. So this could be the first temple that's built and later maybe another temple like it or maybe a temple on the temple lot. Who knows? Anything's possible. So it it just, it always boggles my mind when people think that they know. They're like, no, that can't be it. Again, as though they are God or they are the prophet or someone in authority. Anything's possible. And I think a lot of times, like, that kind of attitude is uh, fueled by a desire for the second coming not to happen. Because they feel like this is, like, it it gives them, like, some peace in their mind. They're like, oh, no. You know, there's just, like, no way. It would take a lot to to build the temple on the Temple Mount. And that's going to be really dramatic. It's going to take a long time. I'll have plenty of, plenty of notice that the second coming is happening because we'll see these crazy things happening in Israel, in Jerusalem. Which, by the way, it seems like they are, but people still don't notice. But anyway, there's going to be people that are probably going to be caught off guard if this is the plan, if this gets turned into a temple, and guess what? Maybe you won't know about it. Maybe it'll be done secretly, so that when Christ comes, you're caught either prepared or not. But maybe this could be done secretly without the whole world knowing, And then before you know it, oh, prophecy fulfilled. Second coming is here. I sure am glad that I was prepared and that I'm one of the the wise virgins. Hopefully that's what we'll all be saying. So, um, so there you go. I can't say anything with authority. Neither can you. But what we can say is that there is definitely a similarity between an actual operating temple in Brazil and the BYU Jerusalem Center and the Independence Visitor Center. All in capital cities, they all resemble each other. We know for a fact that this was built to be a temple, this one, right? It's currently being used for something else. Uh, So it's not too hard to imagine that this right here that's being used for something else could be turned into a temple, just like the Independence Visitor Center. And we have all these examples. This is a fact that all these different temples right here were not originally temples, except for the Provo and and Ogden temples in Alaska. So, um, was there something else? Shoot, I can't remember. Okay, well, let's go to um, Elder Uchtdorf because this was mentioned in the email. Okay, it says... The Kirtland Temple is special and significant because of the sacred events that occurred here. Most importantly, the Savior's appearance to Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery in 1836. We are all very excited and express our gratitude that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was able to acquire the Kirtland Temple and other important entities. It It is another step in a long line of similar events to connect us with the early history of the Church. So... This almost implies like that there's more steps. I sure hope that's the case. Uh, Recently, I had the opportunity to be in some of these properties for a leadership conference. As we met in the Kirtland Temple with stake mission and temple presidents, I was reminded that Joseph Smith once held all these responsibilities at the same same time right there in Kirtland. I pondered about the divine guidance the saints received during these difficult times of the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Today, um, we may continue to rely on divine intervention to move the work forward individually and as his people. I testify that we can rely on Jesus Christ. He is faithful. The Lord, 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. The Lord also relies on each of us in our daily efforts to strengthen and build the kingdom of God. He trusts you and me to represent him in our endeavors, wherever we are and in whatever circumstances we may be in. Heavenly Father is always there, there for us, and his influence and help are always available. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is on our side. He invites us to come unto him, uh, as he did with the saints in Kirtland. He will help us to live a, joy, a joyful life, even under challenging circumstances today. So, and then here's some pictures. Really neat. Now, what I would really like to see is him speaking up here at these, uh, whatever, like these podium things. But uh, may, maybe someday we'll see that. But this this is still pretty good. Uh, it's just, oh my gosh. It's hard not to smile when you think about the fact that we, this is this is ours now. After all this time, oh my gosh. It was always so hard for me to think that this, the first temple of this dispensation, belonged to some other church. And I'm glad that they preserved it. You know, it looks like it's in good condition. I wouldn't be surprised if our church did more to like bring it more up to standard. Because like I said, when on the outside, it looks like there's like these cracks. I don't know if it's just like paint or what it, whatever, but I would imagine that the church would go over this with a fine tooth comb and just bring it up to speed. It's really neat to, neat to see these priesthood holders sitting in the, in the pews, you know. Oh, gosh. We are living in amazing times. And by the way, based on what we just talked about, I just want to point out, this is what uh, the temples of the 24 temple complex would look like. At least according to these plans. I don't know if this plan was going to be for, for each of the 24 temples or if it was just for that first temple. But, you know, th this is basically what those temples are going to look like in the future. They're going to look like this. <clears throat> now, I don't know. I can't, I can't say. I don't know if they're going to, like, um, renovate this get rid of the arches and then make it look like the the Kirtland Temple or maybe maybe they'll leave it like this I don't know but anything's possible we just saw all these examples that anything is possible we can go <laughs> we can go from this to this so it can be pretty dramatic okay so anyway let's see is that was that it um so yeah, I don't think there's anything that I know of <coughs> that like legally prevents us or restricts restricts us from uh, building a temple on church land in Independence, Missouri. Um, you know, you can go through the rest of this article. This is a very detailed uh, paper that goes over the history of the temple lot and efforts that were made uh, by the Church of Christ temple lot to build the temple, but they failed. And um, just a bunch of other stuff. So I would encourage you to watch or to read this this paper. This is what the community the community of Christ or the RLDS at the time uh, had envisioned for the temple. It says, "Dream of the temple that is to be" by Ernest Webb, based on the vision of Joseph Smith the third. He was the the like the prophet of their church um, after the like the schism, right? And uh, they built a temple, but it doesn't look like this. It's the it's the spiral temple that we're all familiar with. And I hear I hear that there's like some controversy over, there was some controversy over this, like the the people that ended up splitting away from the community of Christ in the 80s. <clears throat> they I think that they had they had an issue with this as well as you know many of the other changes that were made, like the change in the name and and stuff like that. So. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.